Hey everybody, it's Diane Gale here from the blog and YouTube channel Sustainable Slow Living and today we are going to talk about the art of making soup um, and I want to touch a little bit on how that relates to a slow living practice. Um, the art of making soup is uh, can be a meditative practice. For me, it is a very meditative practice. It can be part of your weekly routine to manage the uh, food products in your refrigerator, making it a very sustainable practice. And whenever possible, um, of course, you are going to use farm fresh ingredients and um, that uh, lines it up with the slow food movement, which the slow living movement encompasses. So uh, that is um, one of the reasons that the art of making soup is something that is very dear to my heart. And there actually is a roadmap that you can follow to make soup. And we are going to walk through that roadmap today. It starts with creating the foundation of your soup, and then it moves on to creating the broth, developing the body, uh, melding the flavors, and finally, as an optional step, choosing a garnish for your soup. Um, but before you can embark on the roadmap for making a soup, you need to choose the type of soup that you're going to make. So there are three types of soup. There is a brothy soup, a chunky soup, and a creamy soup. And a brothy soup has more broth than body, than vegetables and meat and um, <clears throat> other ingredients. And it is the lightest of all of the soups and it is less filling. A chunky soup has more body than broth and is considerably more filling than a brothy soup. And then a creamy soup generally has more body than broth, although there are some versions of that soup that um, do not. Uh, cream of broccoli is a perfect example of that. But a creamy soup is thickened, um, usually with a dairy product, um, and it is the most satiating and filling of all of the soups. So you need to look at the three different soups and decide what you're going to make. Today we are going to make a chunky soup together. We're going to make a beef vegetable soup. Um, and I am going to put some orzo pasta in it too. So the first thing that you need to do um, as you embark, as you start on the journey of the roadmap to the art of making soup is you need to uh, create your foundation. And your foundation consists of three things. It consists of choosing your fat, choosing your aromatics, and choosing your seasonings. Uh, for fats, I generally, um, I pretty much always use olive oil, although I do sometimes use butter for certain soups. My lentil soup is a soup that I like to use butter in because I like the flavor that it gives it. Um, <clears throat> butter is often used in soups of French origin. Olive oil is more versatile and is used in many, many, many cuisines. And while there are other things that you can use, you know, homemade lard is a great thing to use. You can use just about any fat that you choose for your soup. Um, we're just going to really talk about olive oil and butter today, but I do want to touch a little bit on coconut oil and sesame oil, because if you are making a um, soup of Asian origin, those are probably the fats that you're going to want to go with. Um, Asian uh, cuisine, as I'm sure many of you know, probably most all of you know, has different flavors, flavors that most of us that have grown up in the United States cooking uh, primarily European-based cuisines aren't really used to working with a lot. So uh, generally when you're doing something Asian, you're using different flavors and olive oil and butter don't generally fit in with that profile. And then the next thing that you're going to do when you're building your foundation, um, as I've said, is you're going to choose your aromatics. So aromatics are um, things like carrots and onions and celery and peppers and um, tomatoes and garlic and ginger um, and uh, cilantro. 
And these things are items that you generally cook down in the soup pot until the vegetables are translucent. And uh, when they are heated and crushed, they release flavor and aromatics and scent to your soup. And they're actually a, one of the more important parts of developing a soup. There are two different aromatic bases that it's helpful to know when you're making soup. One of them is uh, French, of French origin, and that is a mirepoix. And a mirepoix is two parts onion and one part celery and one part carrots. And that is probably the most common foundation used for soup making in my kitchen. The other aromatics combination um, that it's helpful to know when you're creating your own soups comes from Latin and Spanish origin and that is a sofrito. And that is a sweet pepper. Um, I usually use red bell peppers because they're so readily available, but any sweet pepper works. Uh, tomatoes and onion and garlic and often cilantro. Um, if you love cilantro, it's perfect in a sofrito. I am one of those people who unfortunately um, tastes soap when they taste cilantro. So I never use it in my cooking. But a sofrito is a very helpful aromatic base to be familiar with when you're designing your own soups. And then, of course, if you're doing um, Asian cooking, you're going to want to use things like shallots and ginger and garlic as the aromatic base for your soup. The other aromatic um, component that is often used in soups is uh, spicy peppers. And uh, generally, you're going to want to pick peppers that come, you know, that originate or that are used often in the style of cooking that the particular type of soup that you're making um, comes from. So you, you might want like a Thailand chili for an Asian soup. Um, but of course, you're not always going to use a spicy pepper. It depends on whether or not you want your soup to be spicy. So like I said, we are going to make a beef vegetable soup today with some pasta and um, we should get those aromatics going. So I've got a cast iron pot here. Uh, you want a pot big enough to make your whole batch of soup. And I am going to use olive oil today. So we're going to put a little bit of olive oil in this pot. And then I'm also going to use a mirepoix. So I have already chopped up two parts of onion and one part of celery and one part carrots. And I'm going to get those in there and I'm going to let them brown a little bit. You want to keep them on kind of a low heat or I shouldn't, I'm sorry. I'm not going to let them brown. I'm going to get them in there and let them cook until they're translucent. You want to keep them on a little bit of a low heat because you don't want them to brown. All right, you guys, so the next part of building the foundation for your soup is choosing your seasonings. Um, one of the things that you can do, the, the purpose of this, this video is to teach you how to build a soup from the ingredients that you have in your kitchen. So one of the things that you can do is you can take a look at recipes online and see what kind of spices and seasonings they're using in the type of soup that you're making. And then you can flow with that and you can use those seasonings. If you're not used to cooking a lot, that will be very helpful for you. If you are used to cooking, then probably you can choose the seasonings on your own. Um, it's not a recipe today, so we're not doing measurements. I have some chopped garlic here, because need I say it again, I love garlic. And I have a couple bay leaves. I like bay a lot in my soup, particularly when using a mirepoix. So I use two leaves. A lot of recipes are only going to call for one. And they are something that you're going to put in the soup and you're going to let it cook down, but you'll remove the bay leaves later. Obviously, you don't eat them. And then we're going to put in some thyme because I think that every vegetable soup needs thyme. And you know that I'm always pretty generous with my seasonings. I believe in seasoning your food. 
And I have a little bit of smoked paprika here. And that is also really delicious in a beef vegetable soup. So now we have got our foundation built. We have our fat, we have our aromatics, and we have our seasonings. And I'm just going to allow this to cook down on the stove until the vegetables are translucent. One of the things that I should have pointed out when I was talking about the seasonings is that if you're new to making your own soups, you might want to choose just one or two seasonings and work with that. Um, it, it, it makes a less complex flavor profile for the soup and it's a little bit easier to do. But the next thing that we want to talk about today is the broth for your soup. The broth is kind of a blanket term that a lot of people use to refer to the liquid that's in a soup. But there is broth and there is stock. Stock is thicker and it is more flavorful. It's made from simmering down um, bones uh, at a very low temperature and allowing all of the flavor from the bones and the marrow from the bones and the little bit of meat that's on them to impart into the liquid. It is more flavorful and um, is possibly the better way to go for making a soup. It is not really the way that I go when I had simmered down bones. I would give them to my beautiful bulldoggy. Um, the broth I would put over his food. I, well, the bones he got. Okay, the bones he got raw. But when I simmered them down for the broth for the the um, stock, I would put that over his food. Broth is generally made from um, <clears throat> like a bouillon. You can buy broth already made in the store. I don't recommend that. It does not have enough flavor. Um, you can buy bouillon cubes in the store. They are primarily salt and um, what I use when I make my soup is a bouillon paste. Um, the one that we have available here uh, in Pennsylvania and that was readily available in California and Maine is better than bouillon. It's a very nice paste. Um, it works really well and it just imparts a great flavor to the soup. <clears throat> Broth is not as flavorful as stock as I've said but it does allow the other ingredients to shine. Another thing that you use to make the liquids in your soup is like a can of diced tomatoes and you leave the liquid in it. Um, that imparts a really nice flavor particularly to like a black bean soup or uh, something thicker, a chili, which we don't necessarily think of as soup, or um, maybe the liquid from cooking down your black beans. So there are other liquids that you can add. Primarily, with the soups that I make, I use bouillons and I use uh, creams, heavy creams. So <clears throat> that's kind of what you'll see me making in my kitchen, but you can experiment and see what you like to use best. And there are so many things that work really, really well. For Asian soups, coconut milk is a great, is a great option. For the purposes of this video, I will use the term broth throughout the rest of the video. Like I said, it's a blanket term and it's a term that everyone recognizes, but you should know the difference between a broth and a stock. When you're adding dairy to your soup to make a cream soup, that's something that you will add later because dairy breaks down. Heavy cream breaks down less than other dairy products, so it's ideal for soup, but dairy will break down and will almost curdle if it's simmered too long and soup is something that you simmer. So generally, you'll make your soup with a broth and then in the last 10 or 15 minutes of your soup being on the stove, you'll add in your dairy and you'll add in your thickener, um, a cornstarch slurry. You'll take cornstarch and a little bit of um, water and you'll turn it into uh, almost like, a, like a, a thick liquid. And you can run that through like around the soup. Don't just throw it all in a clump because it'll harden up and whisk it in very quickly. Um, but we, we are not actually going to be doing that today. Um, it is perfect, you know, for cream of broccoli and cream of potato and stuff like that. 
So dairy you'll want to add at the end. And the other thing that you need to consider with your broth is how much you're going to add. If you look at the recipes that are online, most of them are calling for a cup of liquid uh, to per person. And I never follow that rule. Um, one of the things I want you to see, the reason I'm actually making a pot of soup with you today is because I want you to see how I really do it in my kitchen, um, rather than just following a recipe. Uh, soup is meant to be something that you go into the kitchen and you relax, you chop your vegetables, you maybe have a little music going, you maybe have some candles going, and you just take your time and enjoy the process. Like I said, it's a meditative process. Um, it's a terrific thing to use up the rest of the vegetables in your refrigerator and to just just kind of just kind of put in whatever you feel moved to put in as you're going along. So um, don't miss out on the process in an attempt to get the soup done. Enjoy the process. Leave the soup sit on your stove. Let it simmer and let it fill the house with amazing luscious smells all day long by the time that you sit down to eat it your mouth is watering and it tastes exponentially better than it would have if you just grabbed some from the store or grabbed a bowl at a restaurant or didn't enjoy the process of making it at home so um, I tend to kind of wing it with my broth and I'm going to show you how I do that Okay, you guys, so we have experienced a little filmmaker error. Um, I thought that I was filming and showed you how to do the broth, and I didn't have the camera turned on. So I'm just going to talk you through what I did. Um, <clears throat> I took four cups of water, just because it was enough to cover the um, aromatics and create a little bit of broth. And then I took some Better Than Bouillon paste, and I added it in there. Uh, recipes are going to call for you to pre-mix that. I don't find that necessary. I feel like it can be done right in the pot. This is all going to cook down and melt together. And um, I created enough broth to get the aromatics simmering while I um, get the body of the soup, the vegetables, ready to go in. So this is not going to be enough broth for the entire pot of soup. But later after I develop the body and I put in the vegetables, I can add in some more water. And then towards the end, when I taste the broth, I can decide whether or not I've put in enough bouillon. Remember when you're putting in your bouillon that you can put in more later, but you can't take any out. So go lighter in the beginning than you think you might need and add some later when you taste test your soup if you have to. So I'm going to bring this up to a low simmer so that it kind of cooks with those aromatics and creates a flavor in that broth. And while, I'm, while that's happening, I'm going to cut up the vegetables, the body, for the soup. And I'm also going to get the meat ready to go in. The meat is something that, quite honestly, I often cook down in the soup pot, take out of the soup pot, and use the browned bits in the bottom of the pot, um, add some olive oil to them, and then cook the aromatics in that. The right way to do it is to cook the meat separately and then add it into your pot. I guess right way isn't something that I should say. Um, the way that the uh, soup roadmap is taught is to cook it separately and put it in now. So we're going to do it that way today, but normally I cook it down in this pot first. Um, it's much easier and that makes it a one pot meal. All right, you guys, in the spirit of the true art of soup making, I have cut up a zucchini and some cherry tomatoes and grape tomatoes that were here that needed to be used up. I think they're going to be perfect in this beef vegetable soup. So we are going to throw those into the soup pot. You want to add your vegetables raw whenever you can because they'll impart flavor to your broth as they cook. Um, so uh, it's great to add them raw. If you're cleaning out your fridge and you have some cooked vegetables from a dinner that you had earlier that week, go ahead and throw them in. Also in the spirit of the true art of soup making. I knew um, an older woman who uh, had quite a few kids 
Well, she was older when I knew her, but she had quite a few kids when she was younger. And it was her practice on Saturday morning to get up and clear out the refrigerator and take whatever she had in there and make soup. Uh, so, I mean, it's very sustainable. It's, it's a great way to go. And I have the beef pretty much browned over here. Like I said, I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it right into the pot. I'm going to put it in there with the juices. I put a little bit of oil in there to brown it in and I'm going to put it in there with ju the juices and everything just like it is. That's all flavor. Uh, some people don't like to do that. They don't want the extra fat in their soup and that's fine. And if that's how you feel, then just drain it off before you put it in. So now I've got this all in here. And as you can see, there's not enough broth in this soup. Exactly as I thought was going to happen. Now, the vegetables, particularly because they are tomatoes and zucchini, are going to impart some more liquid to this pot. But some liquid is going to, um, to simmer off. So I'm going to put just a little bit more in here just so that it uh, has, it creates a tiny, you know, a little bit of a broth. And then we are going to embark on the next step uh, for the roadmap to making soup. The other very common element that is added to the body of a soup are things like pasta and rice. So I'm gonna use some orzo pasta in this soup and I have cooked it already. I've put a little bit of oil on it and the reason that I did that is because it's not always best to just add your pasta and your rice into your soup because it, it gets mushy over time. Um, it's still soaking up that liquid. So if you cook it ahead of time and you put a little bit of oil over it, you can add it into the bowls as you serve it. So this is all cooked and ready to go. I think orzo is a great choice. I heard a chef, um, Claire Saffitz, who I follow online, she's amazing, and I heard her say that she feels that orzo is a very underutilized pasta in cooking, and I agree. Orzo is a terrific addition to many dishes, particularly to soups. So now we can embark on the next step on the roadmap to making um, soup and that is melding the flavors. We've got everything that we need in the pot. We're just going to leave it on a low simmer. I'm going to simmer it that way for at least a few hours. An hour will work if you need to serve it after an hour. But um, you really want to go for two, three, four hours and like I said earlier, it's nice to have it going in your house and just have your whole house filled with that wonderful aroma until you're ready to sit down and indulge in a nice steamy bowl of soup. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to let it simmer for quite some time and I will get back with you then so that we can have a taste. All right, everybody. So this pot of soup has been brewing on the stove for three or four hours. And um, I, this is where you want to do your taste test and you want to make sure that it has the flavor that you want it to have. I did add a little bit more bouillon into mine and I considered doing a little bit more broth, but I think I'm just going to leave it chunky. So I want to talk to you a little bit about garnishes. You can garnish the top of your soup. I don't do it very often at home, but it is nice to do if you have company and you're serving a nice hot bowl of soup, it makes it pretty, um, you know, or a dinner party, or sometimes just to treat yourself. But you can put a little bit of sour cream or a little bit of yogurt on top going to add a little bit of creaminess and um, a little bit of tang to your soup. I actually might do this, do, do that with this beef soup later. Um, you can put some toasted uh, sesame seeds or sunflower seeds or pumpkin seeds on top. That's particularly nice when you're doing an Asian soup. Uh, you can put some croutons on top, some shredded cheese on top, or you can just put 
a little drizzle of uh, a really high quality extra virgin olive oil. It adds a little bit of flavor and, it, and again it looks pretty on the top. A little drizzle of some olive oil and some sesame seeds or, or pumpkin seeds or you know thrown on top of like a cream soup is a very attractive way to present your soup to others. So let's get a bowl of this soup dished out and let's have a taste. So there it is you guys, that's our pot of soup. It looks fantastic. I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna put a little bit of the orzo pasta in the bottom of my bowl here. And you can, you know, adjust however much pasta you like. I tend to like quite a little bit. And then take this and put it right over top. Just a little more because I love the broth. And that is a really good looking bowl of soup. Now, if I were a more patient person than I am, I would let this cool off so that I don't have to try and take a taste of it as hot as it is here on camera, but I'm not a really patient person. So we're just gonna give it a try the way it is. Blow it on a little bit, that's kind of the fun of eating soup, right? And then hope for the best when you dig in. Mm. Very good, very, very good. We're expecting a storm later today so this is going to be the perfect dinner. And I hope that you are going to make yourself some. I hope you are going to experiment with the art of soup making. Write down the roadmap. It's right on the blog. There will be a link down below. And just go in the kitchen and relax and let your imagination go wild and your creativity flow. Before you know it, you're going to be making amazing soups for yourself and your family every week. I'm so glad that you joined me here today and you and I will be getting together again and we're going to do it really soon.